and Splashdown, Crew 9, back on Earth. The thing I think back of this whole time frame is how uh, really resilient Butch and Sonny were the whole time. I mean, they launched on what was going to be a short test flight with the crew flight test vehicle with Boeing. And then they moved very quickly into station increment operations and they became seamlessly part of the International Space Station. And they did that because they're experienced astronauts and we had prepared, right? We had flown gloves for them to do spacewalks and we had flown a lot of components for them. So I think that shows the adaptability of crew members. And if I think forward to exploration and maybe some harsh missions uh, to the Martian surface someday or back to the moon, you know, the adaptability of crew members, uh, mm -hmm. changing the timeline for their return. Uh, certainly a huge thank you to their families. Uh, you know, when you think about Butch and Sonny, they uh, enjoyed their time on station. They got to do spacewalks and they got to do lots of cool science and things like that. Their families are the ones that really, you know, kudos to them for uh, being resilient in a, a planned short duration flight now turning into a long duration. And I think back of when they went into quarantine, they went into quarantine in the April timeframe for the early May launch that we had for crude flight tests. So the families, a huge thank you to them. I'm sure the reunion is going to be wonderful with the families. Crew 9 has finally made it back to Earth after a long duration stay in space. That, of course, includes astronauts Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams. I saw over a million people watching SpaceX's live stream, and it seems everyone is talking about this, including the White House. Their posts saying, promise made, promise kept. President Trump pledged to rescue the astronauts stranded in space for nine months. Today, they safely splashed down in the Gulf of America, thanks to Elon Musk, SpaceX, and NASA. But as you can see, there's already proposed community notes on this post. Those notes pointing out the decision to return Butch and Sonny in early 2025 as part of SpaceX Crew 9 was made by NASA in August 2024. This is before Donald Trump became president of the United States. And I bring this up because Elon Musk has now stated several times that the astronauts were refused to be brought home sooner to make things political. I just want to clarify on the issue of, of whether or not you had offered uh, to send this this rocket to space to rescue these astronauts sooner to Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Um, I heard somebody earlier today say, in fact, that didn't happen when I believe it did. No, it, it, we, we definitely offered to return the astronauts earlier. Uh, that's there's no question about that. The astronauts were only supposed to be there for for eight days and they've been there for almost 10 months. Uh, so obviously that doesn't make any sense. Uh, SpaceX could have brought the astronauts back uh, after a few months at most. And uh, we made that offer to the Biden administration. It was rejected for, uh, for political reasons, and that's just a fact. But as you can see, this return of Crew 9 and the launch and handoff of Crew 10 is still being made very political. And this mission will go down in the history books as something to remember. And I can't wait to hear what Butch and Sonny think about riding in Dragon for the first time. They have such a rare experience being able to ride in four different spacecraft. So we have Shuttle, Soyuz, Starliner, of course, and now Dragon. Oh, big waves. Slid down the little ramp. And, and that is NASA like astronaut Nick Hague, so uh, commander of Crew 9. Mobility aid. Now Again, out of smile. Crew Dragon Freedom. <laughs> some smile. Once again, some... <laughs> And speaking of Starliner, what is the future for Starliner? Well, NASA's Steve Stitch was able to give us maybe some insight, basically saying that Starliner's days don't appear to be over and they really would like to get it operational. Hey, I wanted to ask a quick favor. If you haven't already clicked the subscribe button, please do that. It's completely free to subscribe to my channel and I am so close to 200,000 subscribers, which is mind blowing. But with all those people visiting my channel, more people are looking me up on the internet and it's important to keep my information as safe as possible. That's why for over a year now, I've been working with Delete Me, the sponsor of this video. If you ever Google your name, you might find websites that have your address, your phone number and other personal information. And you could go the route of submitting your 
own opt-outs on those websites, but that takes a lot of time and effort. That's why Delete Me's data brokers submit opt-out requests on those websites that are trying to share your data. In fact, over the last year, they found 137 total data brokers with my information, They've reviewed almost 35,000 listings and they do multiple reports throughout the year to make sure that your information doesn't pop up again. That's because after they submit each opt-out, privacy advisors go back and check each source again to make sure the information is actually removed. And again, that's why the membership is so beneficial so that Delete Me can continue to do those reports throughout the year. In fact, I have another report coming up next month. I personally trust Delete Me and feel so much more secure knowing that my information won't be subject to threats of harassment, identity theft, or even stalking. You can get 20% off Delete Me U.S. consumer plans when you go to joindeleteme.com slash LA20 and use promo code LA20 at checkout. That's joindeleteme.com slash LA20 code LA20. I think the last question, Marsha, was what, what, when do we have to decide Crew 12 versus the next step with, with Starliner? And we probably have a little bit more time as we get into the summer and understand the, the testing we're gonna go do uh, to make that decision, uh, whether it be Crew 12 uh, as the next flight or, or Starliner. You know, we're also looking at uh, some options for Starliner, uh, should we need to, of flying it uncrewed. The vehicle has the capability to fly uncrewed if we need to. And so we'll kind of weigh all those things as we get the testing and analysis behind us. Boeing's done a good job of developing a new thermal model, which we're using to try to understand the changes we're gonna make in those dock houses, we'll add some tape and thermal barriers in different places. Um, so it, we have a little time to make that decision. By the way, if you weren't watching this live, it was pretty awesome to see a pod of dolphins circling and splashing around the Crew Dragon as Crew 9 made their return. So I've been looking at my X feed and seeing all sorts of reaction and praise for Elon Musk and President Trump and SpaceX, of course. And it's just been interesting to see some very differing opinions. Charlie Kirk writes, for seven months, Joe Biden left two American astronauts stranded in space rather than hand Elon Musk a win by asking SpaceX to bring them home. It took President Trump less than two months to fix the problem. This is what happens when you put America first, both on Earth and in space. Congrats to the Dragon team and to Crew 9 astronauts Sonny Williams and Butch Wilmore for finally coming home to America. Thank you, President Trump and Elon Musk, for never leaving an American behind. But as Ken Kirtland IV points out, we can finally officially close the lid on this one. During the Crew-9 news conference, both NASA and SpaceX confirmed that the earliest Dragon available to return the astronauts was Dragon 210. Also, NASA said return plans are based on crew safety and not on any administration. And furthermore, Jackie Waddles, who is a reporter for CNN, wrote that a former senior Biden White House official told her that they were never made aware of such an offer from Elon Musk or SpaceX to bring Butch and Sonny home early. And even Eric Berger, a trusted source in the space industry, says, can NASA remain nonpartisan when basic spaceflight truths are shredded? He calls it the gulf of misinformation in this article, and he states, if we're going to start lying about basic truths like the fate of Wilmore and Williams and let's be real, the only purpose of this lie is to paint the Trump administration as saviors in comparison to the Biden administration, then space is not going to remain apolitical for all that long. And in the long run, that would be bad for NASA. So I feel like to truly dive into this, I would need to make a separate video, but I just wanted to say, number one, it's great that they're home. I bet that they're so excited to be back. Their bodies need some time to recover from that long, unexpected stay. Here we have some photos of them touching down at Johnson Space Center's Ellington Field in Houston. And it's just been really interesting to see the variety of responses and reactions to this story of the astronaut rescue, which many people find a bit controversial as a way to explain this. Anyway, if you'd like a more in-depth video, please let me know in the comments. And again, congratulations to Butch and Sunny for finally making it home. I'm sure that they are going to be pressed for, you know, book offers and maybe even make a movie about this whole thing. You know, every aspect of this rescue had challenges and danger. Um, the launch, we start there. 
um, then the rocket landing. I mean, we showed, I, I couldn't believe you were able to land the, ro the, the rocket that fell off perfectly where, where you wanted it to land. The docking video when they actually mm -hmm. connected and w got onto the space station. Then the, the taking off earlier today it was a 17 hour trip leading to the splashdown that all of America watched today. Every single aspect of that has danger and complications. Walk us through yes, the dangers very much of so. each phase. Well, on, on the ascent phase, you, there's always some chance that either the first or second stage will blow up. Uh, in fact, it's, I find it's actually remarkable when it, you see a rocket. I mean, when, when, when I see the rocket, I, I see a list of all the things that are wrong, all of the ways that it could, could go wrong and potentially fail. So you could have a first stage failure, a second stage failure, a stage separation failure. Uh, the, the dragon could fail to separate from the rocket. The trunk could fail to separate from dragon. Uh, there could be uh, a, an, a sort of an engine failure on the spacecraft itself. When, when it's coming back, it's coming in so fast, it's a blazing meteor. Um, and if anything happens to the heat shield, uh, the, uh, the whole craft is going to disintegrate. So uh, it's, it's remarkable that humans can actually go all the way to orbit and, and come back from orbit uh, given the Im immense amounts of, uh, of energy that is required to get to orbit and, and the amount of energy that must be dissipated upon return. Um, and then the, sh the, the, the parachutes have to open, that all has to work. Uh, now, long term, we, we are going to be doing, not long term, this year, in fact, we are launching the, the Starship rocket, which I recommend uh, maybe doing a piece on, because that is truly a, a revolutionary rocket. It is the Starship is the first rocket that has the potential to make life multiplanetary, to make us a multi-planet civilization for the first time uh, in, the, in the history of Earth. And that's uh, wow. truly profound. What well, was amazing, and I studied a lot of this because of my need to cover it, um, at one point going 17,000 miles per hour, uh, going through 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, you have this thermal protection system. Now, we do know that the Boeing Starliner, you know, we, we know that it had problems. So these problems that you talk about, we, we can't take them for granted or get complacent. Explain how, how, you, know, how you get up to 17,000 miles per hour. How do you withstand 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit and the thermal protection system that protects that capsule. And then the launch, obviously, of the parachutes, were, which were critical to slow it down for its splashdown. Uh, yeah, that, that, uh, perhaps we should do a longer segment, because uh, I'd be happy to explain it in detail. Um, I'll do the, I don't know, the two-minute version here. Yeah, um, OK. The, 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 the Falcon 9 rocket takes off with uh, 1.7 million pounds of thrust. So. You can imagine something that, that has enough thrust to lift an office building off its foundations. Um, and th that, uh, it, and it gets to orbit, it gets to roughly 17,000 miles an hour in nine minutes. So from zero to 17,000 miles an hour in, in nine minutes. And then uh, it's just, when it comes back, you've got that heat shield that's got to dissipate that energy. Uh, you, like I said, you're coming in like a blazing meteor and uh, hardly anything can survive that heat. And if the heat shield fails, you just get vaporized immediately. So it's, uh, we're, we're really testing the very edge of human ability here, the very edge of material science. And uh, it's, it's kind of amazing that humans can do this at all. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah. hopefully this gives, hopefully for, pe for people out there, this is uh, a moment of optimism about the future, a moment of excitement about the future, and it portends great things for America and humanity in space. And so some other interesting things is that this is the first and last splashdown in the Gulf of America or off the coast of Florida, as John Edward points out, who is a VP of Falcon and Dragon at SpaceX. So yes, for the missions moving forward, crew will be landing off the Pacific coast, which will be very exciting including Crew-10 in a few months, and also FRAM-2, which that mission is also launching soon. And so we also have some new information about Starliner. They're not done testing it, and we may see an uncrewed flight in a few months. So let me know if you think that it's even worth trying to salvage the Starliner program but there's a lot to talk about in the space industry right now. And so thanks so much for watching my coverage. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.